We're here in the Speedo store in Covent Garden with uh, Liam Tankot, world record holder. He must be feeling on top of the world at the minute after his recent success at the Commonwealths. So Liam, just how happy are you with your performance in Delhi? Yeah, really pleased. It's been a you know a great couple of years. But if we look look at 2010, I've had a you know a great start. We we've you know my, my training phase went really well with a um, a trip out to uh, out to Florida, which you know that went really well, fantastic. And um, you know the actual racing phase went really well as well with a um, Europeans picking up a couple of medals which were pretty unexpected because I wasn't fully ready to go you know the Commonwealth was my main aim and um, you know to pick up a couple of unexpected medals there was great but um, you know to finish the year at the Commonwealth Games in Delhi you know in a in a very special place and in a you know a, a, a cool country with a cool culture um, very different than what we've got here but, yeah it was fantastic you know two golds a silver and a bronze um, two individual golds so uh, yeah, I was for it to bits, to be honest. And you said you won four medals, including two solo goals, which must have really pleased you. So did you get a chance to do a bit of celebrating when you're out in Delhi, or have you saved it till you come back? Uh, not at all. Literally, as soon as we got, um, as soon as we finished the swimming, uh, finished about eight in the evening, went back at a team meeting, had some food, and uh, we actually left the village, um, the, the Commonwealth Village, that evening at well at one in the morning. So yeah, it was a long flight back, and then I actually celebrated by going on holiday, um, just completely relaxed. Now it's been a long year, it's been a tough year, but um, I thought I deserved it. So yeah, just went for a week's chilling in the sun. And how was your experience in Delhi? I mean, there was a lot of uh, problems before the game. We saw athletes not going, but in terms of swimming, all the top stars went. Uh, it must have been a great experience. Oh, it's fantastic! Yeah, like um, yeah, there's, there's always going to be hype around games, whether it's positive or negative. And unfortunately, Delhi's was a bit negative. But um, you know, going into the village and stuff, it you know it wasn't perfect, but it was um, everything we needed, and we and we just got on with it. You know, I'm, I'm there to race, not worry about. You know the rest of the stuff going on around me, so I was, I was pretty focused on my race and, uh, and plan going in, and um, you know I followed that through and uh, came away with a couple of medals, which was uh, obviously you know a, a welcome bonus as well. A number of swimmers got the dreaded Delhi belly when they were out there. Were you worried that that was going to hamper your chances? I, I, I don't think you really worry about it. I don't think many people were you know 100% through through the games, but as I say, you just got to deal with it. Everyone's in the same situation, racing in the same pool at the end of the day, and. Uh, just want to go out there and enjoy it, and um, yeah, I did. Loved it. And do you think Delhi was, uh, you know, the perfect sort of stepping stone for the preparation heading towards the Olympics? I know it's still two years away, but it kind of dominates a lot of people. Oh, speaking. definitely. Well, it's only two years away now, really. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty exciting times. And um, it was my benchmark meet of 2010. So uh, as I say, I've only got one. Well, it was only two, two benchmark meets until until the Olympics in 2012. But um, you know, I've done one of them now in the Commonwealth Games and. You know, hopefully I'll be going to the World Championships next year in um, in Shanghai in China, and that's that will be my final stepping stone towards towards London 2012. So, yeah, it's a pretty exciting time. It's um, coming around very very fast, and uh, you yeah, just got to keep up with that fast pace and you know enjoy it all. I know you've got two gold medals to your name. You've also the world record holder. Is this added pressure, or do you think uh, the home crowd and everyone's going to keep sparing you on? Oh, I think you know the home crowd has been fantastic. Uh, at the World Short Course in 2008, that was our first uh, opportunity to to really realise what home crowd advantage is going to be like, and it was pretty incredible. It was like I was at a football match. Everyone was like chanting my name, getting out of the pool, and um, you know nothing, nothing really experienced before. So you know that's fantastic. Obviously, I did well there, picking up some medals, becoming a World Short Course champion, um, and yeah, that that was just amazing. But um, I, I don't really feel the pressure too much. I just just do what I do because I love to do it and um, I think you've got to accept the pressure to, to take it on and uh, I train every day because because I love it, I want to compete, I want to get out there and um, I know what I want to do so it's um, it's just what I do really. But now you come to the end of the season, are you going to be able to relax a little bit more now? Are you taking a bit of time off or are you still pushing through and, and carrying on with the training? Yeah, so it's the end of the season now, I've had a week of my break and uh, I'm having two weeks off so um, yeah, a week chilling in the sun and uh, a week back home in Devon with my family. So uh, obviously stopping here in the Speedo store at the moment and uh, doing a couple of interviews and um, you know seeing what's around me, seeing you know meeting some of the public, which was nice. And um, yeah, went to Arsenal game yesterday, so I got a few perks of uh, coming home with a couple of goals, which was cool. I heard they even gave you a shirt last night with your name on the back and everything at Arsenal. Oh, it's brilliant! So, yeah, are you now an adopted Guna? Well, I, I'm definitely a you know a mighty Exeter City fan, and uh, you know City through and through. But uh, you know it's it's nice to be invited to you know the Emirates. I went to Highbury before with uh, with one of my friends, and um, you know it's nice to see the Emirates Stadium, see uh, you know a world class team on a world class stage, you know Champions League, 
is, is pretty special and to walk out onto the pitch in front of all those you know 60 I think it's 60,000 and 16 fans and uh, you know give it a wave and a, a bit of a cheer so yeah it was, it was a fantastic experience but you know I'm a city boy. <laughs> As you said it must be a real perk you know nice to be able to go on a pitch like that. Any other sporting events you pick then if you could go anywhere? Oh, I'm actually going back next weekend um, to uh, one of my sponsors is uh, um, sponsors the Exeter Chiefs uh, Gregory Distribution so I'll, uh, I'll be Hanging out there with them and um, and going on the pitch maybe and you know seeing the seeing the rugby team obviously we've got a, a Premiership rugby team down there now. Um, I'd like to have gone to watch um, Exeter City. Unfortunately, they're playing away while I'm back while I've got my time off, so I'll have to uh, have to try and venture around to see them at some point. But um, yeah, so so got that coming up, which would be great. And we've all noticed with the swimmers, you all seem really close. You're all very good friends of each other. Does it spur you on when you see sort of other people having great success, like Becky and Kerry Ann and, and the other swimmers? Is that oh yeah, really it's fantastic. Cool? We're all like a you know a really close knit team, and um, I think that's what you know the secret to our success. We're doing really well over the, over the last few years. Uh, there's no animosity in the team. Everyone you know everyone's willing at each other on, even if they're you, you know your teammate or your competitor. You um you really want everyone to do well, and I think that's um. That's showing. That's showing in the results, and uh, you know you're always going to come back to uh, a cheer from your team, and uh, you know it's a nice feeling. And you've had a really good battle with the Australian swimmers out of the Commonwealth. Obviously, they're going to be back in 2012 as well. Is there like an Ashes-style battle going on between? You know, lots of people are asking about that. They're saying uh, who won the Ashes, and it's like, well, this time us actually. <laughs> we'll take that one. Do you know what I mean a bit of a gloating rights? But um, no, it's. Uh, we're actually really good friends, really good friends with the Aussies. The Aussies are a great group of guys and, uh, you know, just chilling out, chatting and, um, you know, we go to these big meets but, you know, we go there and we catch up with some of our friends but as soon as it's race time, as soon as that gun goes, we're all real competitive and, you know, everyone wants to beat each other so it's a, it's a nice environment to be in. And I guess now the focus is on London and making sure you're prepared for that as well as the World Championships next year. Uh, you've been to Beijing already and got a bit of experience but are you feeling confident that London you can be even more successful? Well, yeah, I, I, that's what I train to do, I, and, and I love it. Like I swim literally because I love it, and um, you know I'm getting success at it as well, picking up some medals, which is has been fantastic. Um, you know I've been part of the senior international team since 2005, um, picked up medals along the way, and uh, you know whether that's worlds, um, well, pretty much every competition bar the Olympics, and you know the Olympics is the big one. Um, but you know preparations going so going well so far, and uh, I'm looking forward to it.